Hello everybody, my name is Arturo Rico, and today I will be showing you the first walkthrough of the level you start off in Border Towns. Alright, so first of all, we are blocked by a fence. We look to our left, we grab one of the boxes, and jump on the terrain. A message icon appears, letting us know what to do on that part, so we proceed through. Over here we have a key, we jump over the pipe and crouch under the second one to collect it. Proceed to the next building, which looks like it's our path, but as you can see, it is being blocked by a bunch of rubble. So we have a message appear letting us know that the only other way is through the warehouse. We go under, and we see that it collapses. So we proceed through, turning on our flashlight, and proceeding up these shelves. We have small setups with the boxes out in the way and planks to jump on. Proceed through collecting that money collectible and we go on to the next plank. Right here we have two crates kind of blocking the uh, exit area so we push them out of the way and jump on this shelf and proceed through the exit area of the warehouse. Here we have to get down safely and there is fall damage as you can see. Here we have planks blocking our next way over. We have to get across to the other side and we do that by removing these planks. We crouch under and here we have a turret with a laser field. So we use crouch again to sneak past this turret and we proceed by going through the alloy. We can collect the key but when we do so we take damage seeing that there's no other obstacle to hide under and sneak past the turrets, we will take damage. Here we jump uh, across the dumpster and across the fence. And here our path is blocked and this gives us a main path for the player. We jump here, collect our health kit, and we receive some health back. Or here our water is also pretty dangerous. So when the, the player falls in, they will receive full damage and die and respawn to the nearest checkpoint. Here we have a message volume letting us know what to do. We have pressure plates and we need to activate all three light beams. So here's our first one and the light turns on as you can see. We proceed by jumping on this plank and I have added barbed wire that way the player does not just jump across the building and fall to their death. There is fall damage up here as well. So we got, if we stand too close to the barbed wire, it will hurt us. Here we have the third one finally activated and we have a swervo movement noise letting us know that the secret path to the bunker has been revealed. Here we have another laser path, so we crouch under it, proceed through to get our Gravenal upgrade. Collect the Gravenal upgrade and the health kit, and as you can see, the statue falls. We push it with the Gravenal upgrade and jump up across, heading to the exit area of our level. Here we push the bulldozer and it reveals a path that exits this level. Here we have another boulder, so we push it out of the way. And we have a treasure chest here, but it is closed since we don't have all three keys. So here I'll grab the third key and it should open up. Again, this is another damage area, but it is a risk reward. So we collect the third and final key, we go back to the treasure chest, and looky here, we have it opened. So we have our forbidden treasure, and behind this next boulder right here, there is a cash item. So we proceed through to the exit our, of our level, side of the bulldozer, and before we proceed on, there is one more hidden object over here and we collect the book on the scoop of the bulldozer. After leaving Arturo's level, the player will walk through a spooky forest. 
Uh, they have some collectibles that they are able to pick up, one of which is our featured asset. It is a rod that they will use later in the map that shows them how to get through the second part of the area. Uh, there are some hidden areas where they're able to pick up collectibles like this book that you see here. And then another rod before they get to their first objective, which pops on the screen uh, that they need to find a way past this rubble. Uh, they are able to move it, but the easiest way is right here just jumping over onto that crate and over the wall. And then another message volume tells them that they cannot get past those trees, so they'll have to find another way around, which is a simple jump back over the wall into the town. They are able to walk through this path that's carved through the trees, uh, take a little loop around, and they have a collectible that they can pick up. And once they go back around the trees, back into the town, there is a, another area uh, with some buildings that you can do some platforming onto uh, to get some more collectibles. And there are some areas that are blocked off uh, just so the player can't get too lost. That is a pretty linear path that they have to go through, which is through this hollowed out building. Uh, it does show the crouching and jump mechanics through and around this rubble, and there is some debris that they can knock away with the gravnel uh, to pick up another collectible. Once they're done in that room, it's just another quick crouch uh, to get out the other side. They will exit into an open area with another rod. They're able to find some hidden collectibles on top of buildings here and then on top of some crates in the open area. We'll take a quick look around, pick up some collectibles on the way, and find our featured asset. Uh, this is actually a map that will show them the way through the maze in the next area. And it is the trigger for the door that opens here in the wall. So once they're ready, they can go through that door and down the stairs into our little warehouse maze. Uh, it does have some lighting, so it's not super dark, but it is dark enough that the player is probably going to want to use their flashlight in order to see the way around. Uh, it is meant to be dark and a little bit creepy to keep with the atmosphere of the scene. And then it also adds a little bit of difficulty to the actual maze, so it's not simply just walking around and, you know, picking up collectibles. Uh, there are health packs hidden throughout the maze that they can pick up. Uh, it's kind of a restorative area, a uh, little bit of a rest for the player um, after all the damage that they lose in Arturo's level and before they get onto the damage that they could potentially lose in the next two scenes. Uh, we do have checkpoints in here as well, uh, that way if they do get too much damage, it doesn't set them all the way back, uh, they just have a quick couple turns to get back to where they were. And once they find the end, they just need to press this keypad, it's going to open a door, and then they will head out to Randall's level. This is the watering hole designed by Randall Stevens. The Bastions have recruited you to clean out their water treatment facility because their water has been a little bit toxic and once you get up here it'll give you a little bit of the story by letting you know that the bastions were the ones that sent you out here to have it repaired um, your first challenge is to get into the facility and you have to uh, make it over the fence and you can use the built crates to get onto the building to you know, collect or use the path over on to the next building that's inside of the fenceway once you drop down you'll notice that you can use the gravel on this path to be able to get across the gap that you wouldn't be aren't just able to jump across and you can carry a crate over to the empty pallet to make a ledge to be able to get onto the final building before getting into the facility once you're up here the, you'll notice there is another pathway on top of the roof that you can use the gravel to bring down and extend over the gap to and we'll get into the facility. You'll complete the first challenge. 
Once you're inside, you'll see the main facility, and but you're led through this little side room so that you can look for the blueprints. Uh, the blueprints unlock uh, message volumes that tell the player how to interact with some of the, the objects with some of the systems that they're trying to repair and they're not just walking through and trying to figure it out on their own. It'll let you know that it's for the filtration system, so it'll let you know to look for the filters. And once you find the filters and install them, it cleans out the toxic water, it starts up the engines, and you've even got lights and a little bit of animation to show you that the engine's running and that the filter's installed. The second one, our second filter system that you're trying to repair, you're finding another filter to install into it, and it's in this blocked room. And you can either get through there by finding a way, or finding the crawl space to crawl through, or you can build a stack of crates near the doorway to make it over the low edge of the doorway. Once you're inside, you'll notice that there's a crate that's blocking the doorway from the other side. And so once you move that. You can move, or you'll be able to open up the rusty doorways. And then we can grab the filter and go and install it onto the next filter system. Once you install it, uh, have that installed. Uh, you can actually explore the area a little bit. Uh, explore the area a little bit and, and f see, see if you can find anything before you move on to the next challenge. Once you're up here, it's the last challenge before you get into the next room, and you'll notice that. Both of the containers are empty and the orange lights are on, so you need to find two containers to be able to get this toxic water cleared out and make it over to the other side. That'll clear out some of the toxicity, but not all of it, so we come over here and grab the second filter off the shelf like we had in the storeroom so visually it'll kind of let the player know that there could be something over there and once we install that the engines running and everything and we can go through the water now and make it over to the other side get a little bit of health to get us a little bit of safety before we open another rusty door Once you're in here, you'll notice that the it's kind of dark in here and that there's pieces of the engine that glow. That's to kind of draw the player's attention to look at the engines to uh, see that there's something missing off of one of them. And once you come over here, you'll see that the, or you'll have a message volume that lets you know that one of these pieces goes onto the engine, or you can use one of these pieces on the engine to get it working again. So once we use our gravnel to get it over there, we can attach it to the engine and it'll activate the lights and it'll activate the button in a, the next room that'll allow us to escape the water for treatment facility. And do have health and cash out here to draw the player's attention so they can see another little bit of an open area and they and once you open it up you can drop down and, and go on to the next area the final level is the library first we're going to pick up our mission and then find our way into the building using this old tree we're going to knock it over and open a hole in the side of the building once we proceed inside we're going to need to unlock the door First we can pick up our collectible and then we're going to use the spin wheel right here to attach to the door which will proceed to unlock it. In the next room we're going to have to bypass these bookshelves using a simple jumping puzzle. Place the block down 
and then proceed to transverse the bookcase. There is another book for as a collectible back in this corner. And now to move into the next room. A table is blocking the way, so we're going to use the Gravno Repulse to push it out of the way. Fire is a major aspect of our level. It will drive the player forward and act as the major damage component. Small fires can be moved around or jumped over, while larger ones require the use of debris and obstacles to bypass them. Over here, we can collect the health back if needed. Otherwise, we're going to grab the second wheel. Attach it to the door. And proceed up to the third level. This level is going to consist of mechanic puzzles as well as movement puzzles. First, we're going to blast away these blocks. And then we're going to proceed to jump over and climb under these bookshelves. In the next area, we're going to use our next asset, which are these pillars, to create a bridge over the fire. Once they're pushed over, the fire is actually extinguished, allowing us to pass by without taking any damage. We're going to repeat this on the next set of fire. We're going to push over the first one and then pull down the second one to create a bridge. We're going to blast these blocks away and pick up our objective book and then proceed into the elevator. Once on the first floor, we're going to notice a much larger fire. This has a much higher damage ratio as well. And we're going to have to combine the use of the fire pillars to push down create a much longer bridge. As you can see the fire actually is extinguished as they fall, but if they were picked up the fire would actually quickly consume the area once had filled. We can create longer bridges this area until we can reach the other side where the exit door is waiting. As you can see the damage ratio is very high so even a small mistake will bring you back to the beginning of the puzzle. Besides being able to be pulled down with the Gravno, the pillars can also be pushed. We will once again transverse the puzzle. Now it's completed, it should be much easier to make it across. And this is an actual mechanic to provide the player an easier time as they find more difficulty and are unable to complete it the first time through. We're going to pick up the final spin wheel. Carefully bring it over to the exit door. Once outside, we're going to proceed to the staircase with the button at the end. Once we press the button, the stairs are actually going to slide into place and swing. And 
this allows us to first grab our last collectible book and then proceed to the roof. Players must be careful not to overstep or move on this as you can fall off. Once on the roof, we're going to radio in for our helicopter to approach. And once we reach the helicopter, we will safely fly away to the end of our level.